Today I have something new for the channel. It's a 3D printer, specifically the Ender 3 V2 from Creality. I'll be showing you how to upgrade from the factory plastic extrusion mechanism to a new aluminum one. I'll also be replacing the Bowden tube with a Capricorn PTFE one. I'll start by removing the blue plastic clip that keeps the Bowden tube attached in the pneumatic connector. The white part can be pushed inward to release the friction on the tube, which can then be pulled out. Now I'll remove the M412 screw that holds the spring tensioner. Next, the M318 column screw that holds the idler wheel arm needs to be removed carefully. The spring is still putting tension on this arm, so it may be difficult to remove the screw without wiggling it a bit. Once freed, the arm can be finally lifted up. Be sure to hold the extrusion spring so it doesn't fly away, though your upgrade kit probably includes one. The M310 screws on the extrusion base can now be removed. The second one is a bit harder to get to. Finally, the M310 countersunk screw can be removed. Hold on to the motor as this is the last screw securing it to the arm. It's also a good idea to disconnect the extrusion motor, though you could do this at any previous step. The stock extrusion gear is getting replaced as well. It has two very small hex screws that friction fit it over the motor post. Now for the goodie bag of parts. While some screws could be reused, I'm going to play this one safe and follow the directions closely. Speaking of directions, this one indicates that the new extrusion gear needs to be installed upside down compared to the old one. It goes about halfway down the post so the top should be completely flush with the new extrusion base. You can hold the base around it to compare. I'll tighten the new, beefier pneumatic connector to the base plate as well, though you can do this step later if you like. I'll tighten an M310 into the extrusion clip, this just keeps the spring in place. Time to build the bearing assembly. It's made of a M48 short column screw, with an M4 washer, and finally the bearing wheel itself. This can be screwed tightly to the extrusion clip. Just make sure the wheel still spins relatively freely. Now I'll line up the motor under the arm and place the base on top. The three screws that hold it in place can be tightened securely. The clip can also be tightened on with a longer column screw. I'll carefully insert the tension spring and rivet nut between the clip and base, and tighten the tension screw about halfway. The clip should be tight, but not so tight you can't squeeze it. Now to upgrade the tube on the hot end. I'll remove a single screw that holds the fan shroud over the toasty bits. I've seen some people remove the other screws nearby, but I found that to be unnecessary. The shroud can then be wiggled off, gently, as it has a few plastic clips holding it in. Though it's not like I couldn't just print a replacement, right? One would think that this mechanism works the same as the other end, where you would remove the blue clip, pull down the white sleeve, and pull it out. But this would be wrong. What you'll need to do is unscrew the connector. I went ahead and slid it up the tube slightly and out of the way but we're still not free yet. I'll turn the printer on and scroll over to control, then temperature, and set the nozzle to a crisp 230 degrees Celsius. The end of this tube is compacted with hardened filament and has essentially glued itself to the hot end. Once you reach temperature, the tube can be safely pulled out. Fair warning, 230 degrees Celsius is a bit hotter than your skin likes. With that old thing out of the way, I'll install the new connector piece and insert the Capricorn Bowden tube. And don't forget the little blue clip. Now we need to calibrate the extruder steps, or E-steps. I'll remove the pneumatic connector and insert some filament, then clip it flush with the extruder base. The E-steps indicate how many steps the extruder will take to move a specified length of filament. The printer can be turned on, and we'll head over to Prepare, and Preheat PLA. The extruder has a safety preventing it from moving filament if the nozzle is too cool. Even though we aren't using it, the printer has no idea. Once the nozzle is over 180 degrees, we'll scroll back up to Move, then Extruder, and instruct it to push what it believes to be 100 millimeters of filament through. It's also worth mentioning that Ricky Impey has a fantastic video on his channel where I learned how to do this myself. A lot of this section is in thanks to him. Once the extruder is finished, I'll cut this length off and repeat this process twice more. As Ricky mentioned, the fastest way to accomplish this is to turn the printer off and on again and preheat again, as the extruder movement settings do not reset until it reboot. You should have three very similar lengths of filament now. You'll need to hold them as flat and straight as possible to measure them. I'm using a digital caliper for additional accuracy. 
The first filament has measured in at 97 millimeters, not too far off. My second measured 98 millimeters, and the third 98 millimeters as well. Now I'll need the average of these three numbers, adding them together and dividing by three, I end up with a mean of 97.6 repeating. Next I'll need the current E-steps. This is in the control menu under motion, transmission ratio, and transmission ratio E for extruder. By default, Creality printers are set to 93, but mine is different from a previous calibration. I'll then use a simple formula, 100 divided by my mean of 97.67, multiplied by my current E-steps. This results in a new transmission ratio of 96.75, though I'll round it to 96.7. I'll edit the setting to reflect my new number, then back two menus to the control screen. Select Storage Configuration, and you should hear a double beep. This indicates that the settings have been saved to the board. Then just for funsies, I'll extrude another 100mm of filament to see if the length is more accurate. Sure enough, I'm getting 100.9mm, which is well within tolerance considering my cuts were not the cleanest on this piece. Lastly, I'll trim and insert the other end of the tube into the extruder base we just installed, replace the little blue clip, and some short assembly and bed leveling later, we're ready to print. Thanks a ton for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this and would like me to cover more 3D printing things, let me know down below. Subscribe if you aren't already, most of you aren't, and come watch me break things over on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. See you next time.